Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel SFTC Panther Panther Schools. And again, I welcome you all to the series Oops Concept with Salesforce. This video, we are going to talk about what are initializer blocks in Salesforce. This is the these blocks are basically related to a particular object. The particular object is basically nothing. It is the instance of your FX class. They don't have any uh, definition modifier. When we say definition modifier, that means they cannot be declared as public or private. And they are as they are associated with the Apex class object, they will be executed every time you are trying to create the objects of a particular class. So, and these are always executed before the constructor of that class is executed. This is the syntax of creating the st uh, static in a, sorry initializer block in Salesforce. We have to use flower brackets or curly braces and uh, between these curly braces we will put our logic. Now what kind of logic we could put or when we should use initializer block in Salesforce. Say whenever you wanted to execute some logic before even your constructor is executed. For example you are working with a say, say some classes where you have some cars and car could be of different types different models. And you wanted to set the maximum speed of a car based on the type or the model. You can do that before even your constructor is executed. You can iterate over a complex array. You can iterate over some custom metadata or custom settings. Prepare some maps and that map you can use in a different places. You can also initialize some error handling in your static, uh, in your initializer block. This initializer block is also known as instance initializer block because this is associated with the object in Salesforce. Before we go ahead and talk about the demo, please give it a like, subscribe the channel and also share with your colleagues. Now let's quickly see how we can work with the initializer block in Salesforce. This is a very simple Apex class which I have created. The name of my class is car and I am using this developer console. If you are familiar with Salesforce development, you might be using Salesforce Visual Studio Code. That is also fine. It uh, depends upon you what kind of IDE or what kind of Salesforce development platform you wanted to use. To create this class, click on this file, new and select FS class. And here you have to give the name of your class. In my case, this is car, and this is a very simple code which I have written over here. I will walk you through. This is just a very simple variable, private integer variable, and the name of variable is maximum speed. And you can see here, this is my stat, uh, this is my initializer block. You can see the curly braces opening and closing, and then inside that I have a debug statement, and I'm assigning the maximum speed 70 for any car for now. We don't have any fancy logic over here. We don't have any complex logic. Then I have two different constructor, one without parameter and under that constructor there is a simple debug statement maximum speed whatever the variable we have. And then I have another constructor accepting two parameters model and type and then I'm just having three simple debug statement out there. Now to test this what we will do is we will go ahead and click on debug and then we will select open execute anomalous window. If you have some code over here just remove and then we need to create the object of our class which is car. So I have created car new car sorry this is the name of my variable equal new as a keyword car as a constructor and then you need to Check this checkbox open log and select execute button. This will execute your code and you will see the window like this. Check this checkbox debug only and you can see first our line number 9 has been executed and then our line number 14 executed. So if you don't know how this call stack is being executed I will give you the link in the description as well as you, will, you can click on that eye, eyeball icon in the top right. You, you can watch that video as well. So this is line number 9 and 14 is executed. Now as we talked about this block is basically associated 
with the object that means every time we will create the object of our class car this block is going to be executed even the maximum speed has been assigned at one right so what we will do is we will again open debug and execute anomalous window this time we will create the object two objects of the same one with the constructor which have no parameters the second with the constructor which is accepting two parameters and then we will see that this state and this block is basically being executed twice so go ahead and click on execute and it will open the execute log for us we can go ahead and click on this debug only and you will see this is again 9 and 14 these are the line numbers which executed as a part of method 1 the object 1 which we have created then again line number 9 executed then 18 19 and 20 if you go to class we have got 18 19 and 20 and this is our line number 9 this is the line number 9 we have so that is basically how your instance initializer block works in salesforce as i said any time we will create the object of the class car this particular block is getting executed now there could be something that you say hey okay we don't want it to execute this particular block if the block has been executed once that means if i create the object using this particular statement without without parameterized constructor this would be executed but if again i try to create the object with parameterized constructor this should not be executed so how we can achieve this and this is where our static blocks come into the picture these static blocks are associated with the class these are not associated with the apex objects okay these are associated with the class these are only allowed in the outer class when we say that only allowed in outer class that means if you have multiple classes within the same class then you can only have this static block inside the outer class and they, they are only initialized once the class is loaded that means these are not associated with the objects these will only be initialized once your class is loaded okay and this is again just the simple keyword that you have to put is static to make your code run as a static block okay so these are the three important points that you need to keep in mind this is a simple keyword that you need to keep in mind everything else is going to be we have same except that this code will only execute once you are trying to instance your or class you are trying to load your class so how this will look like in the real time is so again we have this particular uh, block now what we'll do is we'll say okay go ahead create a static block just a simple static keyword opening and closing parenthesis and then here you can just copy this say we are trying to put instead of uh, instance we will say static block okay a static block executed we are not trying to put any value over here just the simple static block executed statement that is under line number 13 okay and then again we go to debug execute an ominous open window and here before that we will also put something I'm, I'm just trying to put some statement over here so what i'll put is i will say like this okay just uh, i'm trying to create a horizontal line between the first object and the second object now what will happen let's see what will happen this particular block which is instance initializer block is going to execute twice because we are trying to create two different objects okay or let's say i'm going to create three different objects okay then this static in this static block is only going to execute it once it is not going to execute it three times okay so we have this code over here make sure this open lock tick box is checked and then click on execute we are going to see the outcome is here click on this check check box which is debug only and you'll say static block executed you can see here line number 14 is executed first then we got instance initializer block line number 9 and line number 18 then we got this particular divider okay we got this divider for the object number 2 which is car, new car 1 
we got instance initializer max speed model and type then we again got the horizontal line which is between object number one and two and then we got instance initializer max speed model and type now you see this particular line is only executed once it is not executed anytime you are trying to create an object so this is again the benefit of your static block now this static block will be will remain same throughout your transaction no matter if you are calling multiple classes from this class car the value whatever you are setting over here will be remain same until unless you are changing it so if you change it then that value will be there so this is how this works now there is something some order of execution in our apex class what kind of variable or method execute first so as you have seen okay let me quickly put a comment over here as we have seen first static block okay we've got a static block then instance block and then constructor so this is how basically your block executes so whatever the code you got a static block is going to execute at first instance block is execute going to execute after that and then the class constructor are going to execute it so this is you need to keep in mind like what is the execution order of your different blocks so this is it for this video thank you for your time if you are still here really appreciate your patience and before you go ahead please give it a like subscribe the, um, press the bell icon so that you don't miss any update from us thank you